Hi everyone, Father Lamb here, and it's Wednesday again, Wednesday, January 25th, only 11 months till Christmas. <laughs> Time does go quickly, doesn't it? Today is the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, wonderful saint, wonderful feast day. And I don't know about you, but St. Paul gives me a lot of hope. And on one hand, he was someone who had a checkered past, and he's someone who persecuted Christians, who became one of the greatest saints in our church. So on, one, on the one hand, he should really give us all a lot of hope. We don't need to keep our past from keeping, keeping us from living the gospel now. All of us have made mistakes. All of us are sinners, you know, and God, God's okay with that in the sense that when we convert, he will work with us. And what a powerful experience uh, St. Paul was, you know, persecuting Christians and then becoming, you know, Christian himself and uh, writing letters to the different churches as he was evangelizing. And then those letters became part of sacred scripture. Think about that. So if you have anything in your past that, you know, had a little voice in the back of your head that says, well, look what you've done. You can't preach the gospel. You have this sin, this sin. God's okay with that. Just confess it, let it go, and let him work through you. The thing about St. Paul, there was a part of him that was, how would you describe it? He was like all in. He was all in when he was persecuting Christians, and then he received that conversion experience, and then he was all in preaching the gospel. Are we all in? It's so easy to remain you know, on the periphery of things. I don't want to get involved. Like, What's going to happen if I get all in? What's God going to expect of me? Well, he's going to give you eternal life. That's a pretty good, it's a pretty good benefit, huh? So when we look at this in our own lives, I think what the call is, is really is the call to evangelize. And in the gospel today, Jesus appeared to the 11 and he said to them, this is Mark's gospel, chapter 16. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Go into the whole world. Like, I mean, 11 guys starting with, into the whole world. And look where it's, look where it's spread to. It had to be overwhelming to those early disciples. Go into the whole world. Where do we begin? And preach the gospel, evangelize. And what does that mean to evangelize? What is to preach the gospel? It's to proclaim the gospel. It's to get the gospel out there. I'm just gonna give you a really simple thing that you and I can do. Because sometimes we think, oh, those who proclaim the gospel or evangelize or those who are preachers and all that kind of thing, giving talks or writing books about this, no. Here's a really simple thing. You wanna evangelize? Go up to a person, you could know them or they could be a stranger and ask them this question. Is there anything in your life right now that you'd like some prayers for? Like any prayer intentions that are in your heart right now? And if you go up to a stranger, a stranger might say to you, yeah, and they might name a few things. You know, I have some health issues and my brother's sick or so-and-so, my friend lost a job. We all have different things we need that, that needs prayer. That's evangelizing in its simplest basic form. And then what you can say to the person is, I'm going to pray for that intention. And then you can just leave their presence. You've just planted a seed and you have started to evangelize. If you want to take it a step further, as time goes on and you get a little more courage, you could say to them, how about if we say a little prayer right now for that intention? Somebody, somebody might say to you, well, my intention is my mother, she's sick. How about if we say a little prayer right now for your mother? And you just bow your head in prayer, say in Jesus' name, and may your mother get better, may, may God just bring her to full health. You just said a little prayer. You brought the Holy Spirit into the equation. You're evangelizing. It is that simple. We complicate it. We're going to set up programs how to evangelize, write great talks on evangelization. How did the disciples do it with 11 people in the beginning? One person at a time. Do you have anything that you need prayed for in your life? You know, there's some people in my life I know when you ask them to pray for you, you know they do it. I could give you tons of examples of people. When you say, you know, pray for me, they're like, yes. And when they went to their prayer, they would they definitely put you in their heart and do that. I could, I could list names uh, of people who do that. What a great example for all of us. When someone asks you to pray for them, do you take it into your heart, their intention, and bring it before the Lord, you know? Maybe today we just might take a look at that in our own lives. I challenge you and I challenge myself to evangelize. And what does that mean? Ask someone in your daily life, do you have any intentions that need prayer? And then when they tell you, take that intention and bring it into your heart and do pray for them. And that, I guarantee you, the next time you see that person, you're gonna be thinking of that because that, that intention is in your heart and it's right there, you know? What a powerful way that you and I can evangelize. 
about 10 years ago, I was at a rectory watching some game or something in the evening, just kind of relaxing and carrying on. And one of my buddies was there. I have even mentioned him by name. His name's Monsignor Tom Orsalak, pastor of St. Peter's Church in Reading. Great guy. He got a phone call on his, on his uh, cell phone while we we're watching the game. He excused himself, went into the hallway, and he's talking to the guy. You could tell the guy had some problem. He was talking with him. And after a while, I noticed Monsignor was praying into his phone. And afterward, he came over and we were talking. He said, yeah, he says, it's something I've learned recently. He said, just to do right away. So there he is on his telephone, right? This person's telling the problems. And he said to this person, how about if we pray right now for your friend or whoever it was that intention was? And they did. He just opened up his heart and started praying. He was evangelizing on the telephone. There we were watching a game. He's bringing Christ to that person. I thought, that's really cool. These are simple ways that you and I can get creative in how to spread the gospel. So here's the challenge this week, dealing with the conversion of St. Paul. On the one hand, don't let your, the sins of your past hold you back. God doesn't care. Once you, once you confess your sins, God's like, Where, what sins? They're forgiven, let go of it, let's move on. And secondly, ask someone this week, do they need some prayer intentions? What are they concerned about? And if you're even more comfortable, follow up with, how about if we say a prayer now? If you're not comfortable saying a prayer at that moment, take it home with you and bring that person into your heart and pray for them. Because then, my brothers and sisters, you're evangelizing. Let's ask St. Paul to give us the grace we need to let go of our sins of our past and turn to the person next to us and ask them, do you have any prayer intentions? And take those intentions into your heart. God bless you.